Hey guys, Anthony here with We Back Tesla. And We Back Tesla because if Tesla fails, the acceleration to a sustainable future fails, and we can't have that. So please consider subscribing, become a part of the solution when you make the awesome decision of purchasing your Tesla. You can offer our link down below, get free supercharging, but that's enough of that because today's topic is health. Specifically, I'm going to talk about the battery health and the battery degradation of our standard range plus. I touched on that in our last video. I'm going to dive a little deeper into our charging practices, how we try to maintain really good battery health and hopefully continue to have no issues with the battery. Second topic is bugs. One specific bug in this car that I had to take care of today, uh, Tesla pushed out a software update that informed me what was going on. I'm going to touch on that. And the third thing I'll touch on first is uh, personal health. Uh, I want to touch on this just real quick. My health has not been so good in the past few weeks. I was in the ER last night, I freaked the family out, freaked myself out a little bit. Past couple weeks I haven't been feeling great. I've been experiencing some concerning symptoms and I've had some blood work which shows some concerning markers. But I don't have any answers as far as what's going on. So I'm hoping in the next few weeks I can start figuring out what's going on and hopefully it's just something weird and a fluke and nothing serious. But I do want to say any positive thoughts or vibes sent this way are greatly appreciated. The main reason I wanted to bring this up was just my video uploads are going to probably be sporadic. I'm going to try to still get a couple videos out a week, but I'm not sure how the next few weeks are going to go. But yeah, I hope you guys stick with me. I really want to continue producing content for this channel and just push the message and help you guys out in your EV journey wherever you are. But I'm gonna stop boring you with that. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the health of my battery. So in the previous video I touched on this briefly. I charged 100% for the second time in the life of this car. I've got about 5,000 miles on it. When I charged 100% a couple weeks ago, the projected mileage showed me 240 miles, which is the rated range of this car. So I was pleasantly surprised by that because the first time I charged 100% was at like 1,000 miles and it only showed me 236 miles when I did it then. But that was also in the spring. And I also tell people, and I personally don't really pay attention to that number, as long as it's in the ballpark, I'm okay with that. There's just so many things that go into that calculation and then also you can't rely on that calculation just because it can't predict what your next trip's going to be, if you're going to be on the highway for most of the trip, if it's going through weather. The main thing I do is I use the percentage and the percentage is just the best way to go in my opinion. The way I do it is in my head real quick, I know I can go two miles per percentage point easily in this car or three kilometers per percentage point. And then when I'm going on a trip on the weekend or something, or if I know where I'm going, I just kind of I see how far it is. And then I look at my percentage and I automatically know if I'm gonna make it and if I'm gonna need to find a charger in the area when I get there. And then I just don't put too much thought into it, I just drive. I also use the Tesla navigation, which is really accurate. It's been extremely accurate. Every time I use it, it gets me within about three percentage points of what it projects. So I, I'm very confident when I use that. So between those two things, the navigation and my little trick with the two miles per percentage point, three kilometers per percentage point, I don't really pay attention to the projected range on the battery. I don't have it set to that. And I would suggest you don't pay too much attention to that either. So what I'm finding is that the battery health in the standard range plus so far, about 5,000 miles in, has been, there's no degradation. It's, it's been great. And people have also been asking about my charging habits. And so what I do is I actually set the, the limit to 80% and I charge every night, regardless of how much battery I used that day, even if it's only one percentage point when I went down to the grocery store and back on a weekend and I didn't go anywhere else, I'll still plug it in every night. You don't have to, but it's just habit now. Every time I know I'm just coming in for the night, I just plug it in and I forget about it. It literally only takes a couple seconds to do. So yeah, 80%. And then maybe about twice a month, I'll charge up to 90% on the weekends, like on a Friday, if I think we're gonna go travel out of town, just so I have that extra 10%, maybe I don't have to worry about charging on a long round trip. So like 90% of the time, I charge to 80%, and 10% of the time, I charge to 90. 60% of the time, it works every time. That makes no sense. Yeah, every once in a while, I'll charge to 90. Most of the time, I charge to 80. And I do that every night. And then I've only charged 100% twice. I made sure that I got to 100% right before I left. You never want to leave your battery sitting at 100%. That's just not good for the battery. But if you're going to go on a long trip, get to that 100% when you're going to leave. 
then you'll be just fine. Or if you're at a supercharger and gets 100% and you leave, you'll be just fine. You're not gonna hurt the battery. Those are my charging habits. The battery health is A plus so far. And I couldn't be happier with this car in the range. I do plan on doing some more range test videos. I haven't done any since the spring. I need to do some for the summer. I might redo some of my tests I did in the spring and maybe do a comparison against the spring numbers, which were really good in this car. So I can only imagine that the summer numbers would be just a little bit better. But if you have any questions about the battery health or charging habits or just my car in general, EVs, leave them down below. The second health thing about my car that I want to talk about was software bugs. And specifically, Sentry Mode has been giving me issues and I know other people have experienced these same issues. Specifically, what's been happening is about 10 to 20% of my Sentry Mode videos have either been corrupted to where I can't play them back or they'll have this like green bar on like half the video and you, you can't really see what's in the video. I had just attributed this to some kind of software bug that I hoped that Tesla would fix in a future software update, which is awesome that I can even say that, that my car just gets continuous software updates, but they actually did push out a software update that kind of fixed this issue. And what was actually happening is the thumb drive I bought was actually this one, just the 32 gig version, a USB 3.0, 32 gigabyte. And what was happening is on the new software update, I actually get a warning now. And the warning stated that my thumb drive that I was using didn't have fast enough write speeds and to replace it. So that kind of explains why some of the videos were corrupted. I don't think the write speeds were fast enough. So what I did is I went to Best Buy today and I bought another one of these. This is the fastest one I could find. It's a 3.1 64 gigabyte slim USB drive. Now I can't really find the write speeds on these things. And on the back, it tells me that the write speeds vary depending on the capacity. So I'm wondering if the 64 gigabyte is gonna be enough of a speed boost to stop giving me problems as far as my sentry mode videos. Now that I bought this, I'm gonna run with this for a few weeks, see if I stop getting corrupted videos or see if it still gives me that warning about write speeds. And maybe I'll have to jump up to the 128 gigs. I'm not sure. Honestly, the 32 gig was enough storage, but apparently the write speeds on that 32 gigabyte was not fast enough. But I will keep you guys posted on that. That's really all I got for you guys in this video. I know I owe you guys a, a video comparing the Chevy Bolt that we rented on our recent trip to Disneyland. I have a comparison of the Model 3 Standard Range Plus to that car. I have not filmed it yet. I have jotted down some notes. I just haven't had time to film it. I'm filming this one today because I had to take care of it today so that my sentry mode worked. But yeah, like I said, with my health things, I'm gonna be trying to pump out videos as quick as I can. If you guys have questions or wanna interact with me, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, we back Tesla. And if you guys are subscribed, thank you. If you're not, please consider it. If you guys drive an EV, seriously, thank you. If you don't, seriously consider it because these cars are fantastic. And just watch all my other previous videos, listen to all the other YouTubers out there who are talking about these cars. These cars are no joke. But I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm going to go to bed. I'll see you guys in the next video.